Hey there, good afternoon, Facebook friends. It is Monday. It is the 29th of July, 2024. My name is Jim. Thank you for checking in and giving us a slice of your afternoon. <laughs> Yesterday, we had a great service. It was wonderful to be back home at Harris Chapel after our family gathering in Missouri. All of us made it safely to Wyoming, Texas, Indiana, and even down to Branson. But I want to share with you today because our, our recording yesterday, nice video, no audio. It was important, I believe, to help get this message out. So here I am this afternoon bringing it to you. We're walking through a series called the One Another Series, dealing with how we get along with one another. I'll tell you what, gang, it's just that way in our world, whether it's at work, in your family, in your neighborhood, at the grocery store, at the bank, at the post office, wherever you go, you're going to run into other people. And I guess the question for me is, how do we deal with one another? I believe we have to start first and foremost in the life of the church. That's where my core is. That's where my belief system finds its home. And it goes out from there. It goes into my family, it goes into the community and beyond. So we're walking through a series called Building Up One Another. The first book I ever purchased back when I became a Christian in the summer of 1978 was this book entitled Building Up One Another. This is that book, first book I ever bought. In fact, it has my home address, Route 6, Box 265, Rolla, Missouri, 65401. And it was published by a guy, or written by a guy named Gene Getz. He talks about all the different ways that we as one another interact, specifically in the life of the church. A few weeks ago at church, I talked about loving one another. That's really the foundation where all this lands on and starts at is loving one another. And then we talked about being members, belonging to one another, and then being devoted to one another. Yesterday, we talked about honoring one another. That is a big deal. Now, if you have a Bible in the book of Romans in the New Testament, Paul, the writer, gives some beautiful direction on what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Social media, churches, political people, all these uh, colleges, all these different entities will tell you about how to be a Christian. And what a Christian, even, even people who don't believe in Jesus will tell you what Christians should be and what they should look like. Atheists, agnostics, everyone will tell you what a Christian should do and be. The Bible is our guide. And I'll talk to you about that another time when we go there. But in the Bible, in the New Testament, Paul, in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, gives us direction on how we are to belong and be part of one another. Now, I don't want to drag this on this afternoon, so I'm just going to highlight a couple things. In chapter 12 of Romans, Paul gives us a beautiful checklist, if you will, as to how we as Christians operate. It starts there in chapter 12, beginning at verse, I think it's verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. And he starts down through this checklist. And I want to highlight for just a few moments this afternoon in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, where he says this. Be devoted one to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. I want to talk to you this afternoon about what it means to honor one another. It's part of the mandate that we have as believers. If you call on Jesus, if you say, I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm a Christian, it's part of your DNA. It's part of your mandate to honor one another. The other day when we were coming back to the state of Illinois, beginning right over the border in East St. Louis for about the next 45 miles, we were honoring the state police. I told my wife, there should be no reason for the state of Illinois to have a lack of funds in its state treasury because the state police are out doing their work. We didn't have to personally honor them. There were all kinds of other people along the road that were honoring them and taking care of business. By the way, I've never got a ticket that I didn't deserve. <laughs> we honor them. In fact, if someone goes into a court of law, they address the judge as, your honor. All different kinds of ways that we honor. I took a moment just to list these out. 
the kids when we were at the reunion last week. There were times that even if they were the youngest, seven-year-old uh, Isabel, 10-year-old Crosby, we honored them. One night we had a, a bonfire and they had some music they wanted to do. They picked up teams or picked up sides for teams to play badminton and to play wiffle ball. And they were the coaches of those sports. We honored them. What else? I think about our former superintendent, Mr. Roush. Mr. Roush has moved on from Wapahani. He served in our school system for a few decades. One time I met him at a breakfast over here at the New Burlington Methodist Church. He and his family were there. I said, well, good morning. It's great to see Mr. Roush and his family. He said, you can call me Brian. I said, no, I can't. You're the superintendent of this school system. You are to me, Mr. Roush. We have a new superintendent. His name is Mr. Black. Now, I think his first name is Aaron. Makes no difference to me. He's Mr. Black our new superintendent, we honor him. I think about my dad. All the years he served as a teacher, as a counselor, as an administrator in the different schools. I basically remember the time he served at Rolla High School. We moved there in 1965 to Rolla, Missouri until he retired a couple decades later. He had several different jobs, but I watched my dad as he honored those people around him, whether it be teachers, administrators, those who served above him, above him, like superintendents, the custodians, the cafeteria workers, and even the parents, and I think I said students. He honored all those people around him. What does that mean? We'll get into it in a little bit. Honoring. I think about here at Harris Chapel. I always uh, call Pastor Dan when I'm in a public setting like this. I rarely ever call him Dan. I just call him out as Pastor Dan because he has a title. He has influence. He's one of the pastors here at Harris Chapel. What else? I think about honoring my wife. What are ways that I can honor her? Well, as I shared yesterday, I pick up my socks around the house. If there's stuff laying on the, on the counter, dishes and other stuff, I make sure that I clean up after myself. I do my best not to make a mess or leave a mess at the stove or in the microwave or in the sink. I also do my best when I go to town to stop by a Speedway. It's like a, you know, a quick trip or 7-Eleven. We have Speedway here in the Muncie area. And I bring her home a coffee, which is a decaf that has a little bit of skinny cappuccino on top of it. Because I love her. I like her. I want to honor her. Honoring. The Bible talks a lot about honoring. Let's look at it. I knew a guy, still know him. He was a professor back at Bethany Nazarene College, now Southern Nazarene University. His name was Mark, Mark Rieger, Dr. Mark Rieger. He came to Bethany as a student in the 60s and never left until he retired, and he's still around the area. When I went to that college, they had just installed a brand new organ. It was built somewhere over in Europe, disassembled, shipped to the United States, reassembled in this chapel there at Bethany, Oklahoma. Dr. Riegerd was one of a handful of people that knew how to play that thing and gave lessons. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Dr. Riegerd is an amazing musician. He's got a wonderful com comedic side, but he's also a dedicated pianist. I've listened to him before play solos and do all kinds of entertaining. I've also listened to him as he has been an accompanist to different singers and instrumentalists. Accompanists mean everything. They make that singer, they make that instrumentalist better than they really are. They fill in those gaps. If the person they're accompanying stumbles, they pause, they wait, they restart, they do whatever it takes to make that person who's singing or playing an instrument look so awesome. Dr. Riegerd does a great job of that. Any great accompanist is like that. That's what we're called to do. In fact, funny story, when Janie and I, we were associates at Dell City back in the early 80s, 1980, 81, uh, and, and we, we got up to sing a solo. And that's back when if you didn't have an accompanist on a keyboard, you could use a cassette. Some of you don't know what those are. Check with your parents or grandparents, they'll tell you. We put this cassette in the player, we got up, and I think we sang an old song, Angels All Around You. And we're just having a good time, sing along this duet, and the tape broke. <laughs> we looked at each other and we said, that's it. And we sat down. It was over. I share that with you because an accompanist will make that other person look better, sound better,
perform better. You and I are called to honor those around us, whether it be law enforcement people, whether it be teachers, whether it be family members, all of us are called to honor others. Now, what does that mean? Paul in his writings said that that was just one of the things we're supposed to do in Jesus, to honor each other. It all starts with Jesus. Think with me for a minute. Back in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, Last Supper, Jesus is in his, and his disciples are gathered in that, what we call the upper room. I've been there. He begins washing their feet. You talk about a way of honoring others. Jesus could have snapped his fingers and said, hey, could one of you guys, because they've been following him for three years, could one, hey, Peter, Thomas, could one of you guys come over and just wash my feet? He didn't do that. He washed their feet. He set an example. Now, here in the sanctuary, there's not a basin, and I don't have a towel, and we're not washing feet, but we do honor each other. We respect each other. Jesus gave us that example. And when you and I come along, we're like, I don't think I can do that. You're right. We can't do it on our own. We're selfish. There's a tendency in our hearts and lives to, to reach out to people when we want something in return. Kind of like, I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back. How can we help each other to, to better this, this program, this entity, whatever it is? Jesus comes along and he says, I want you to just do life honoring each other. Just like my dad did. I'm seeking to do that as well. How do we honor I don't think I can honor that person. I don't like that person. Well, that's where you have to come back to Jesus and say, he didn't stop the bus. He didn't stop the parade and say, well, I can't do this. I don't do windows. He just honored the disciples, even the least of these. The Bible tells us that if we honor the least of these, these it's like we're major players in the kingdom of heaven. That's what it means to honor, to respect others. Well, let's talk about that. Jesus was the example. During his day in the first century, Roman authorities were running around trying to strut their stuff and tell the Jews and others how they were the ones to be respected. Jewish leaders were going around, Pharisees, Sadducees, with their titles and their chests out, talking about how they needed to be respected. Jesus went around and his mission was to honor his father. And he calls us to do the same thing. In fact, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your kingdom come through me as it's happening in heaven. I'm an ambassador for you, Jesus, here. What does that look like? I honor those people around me. I want you to help me on this. Take a moment today. Let's do a little test, okay? I'm not testing you. You're asking yourself these questions. It's an evaluation. How do I honor people around me? What does that look like? How do I respect people around me? Am I doing that? Have I done that recently? It does take work. It's not automatic. We take time. We just, the person who's the greeter as we walk into the department store, we honor that person and say, hey, great to see you. Are you having a good day? You may be surprised what they tell you. When you see people working diligently, the person who delivers your mail, the UPS person who delivers your, your packages, do we honor them? How do we do that? With our family members, to strangers who we don't even know, people who wait on us at Bob Evans or Applebee's or wherever your restaurant of choice is, do we honor them by just saying, hey, thank you for serving us today? I'll never forget, it was just a couple weeks ago, the Iron Man, these guys were running by and, and, they're, and they're like, we're trying to honor them, and they're saying, hey, thank you for your work. I know I shared this before. Uh, they're, they're saying, thank you so much for, you're such a blessing. You're such a hero. I'm like, we're handing out cups of water. You guys are the heroes. You ladies are the heroes. We were taking time to serve and honor them. Do you honor others for their benefit or just to get something back from them? That's a good question. Can you say that you rejoice with those who rejoice? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Sometimes in churches, pastors, we can envy other churches. Churches that are growing fast. Churches that are big. Church X, I called it yesterday. And we can be jealous in our hearts if we let ourselves go there. But you know what I say? As long as Church X is winning people to Jesus, 
and they're baptizing people into the kingdom. Go Church X. I celebrate with Church X. We may not have their music. We may not have their facilities. We may not have their preaching, but they are building the kingdom. And I just say, go Church X. And my heart breaks because I rejoice when they rejoice, but I also cry when they cry because sometimes Church X may have a pastor who walks away, who messes up, a lay person who ends up in jail. That's a heartbreak, and my heart breaks with them. I don't ever believe Church X cuts corners or preaches a cheap grace. If they're winning people to Jesus, and if they're baptizing new believers, I'm saying, go Church X. I want to honor Church X, and I pray that Church X honors us as well. We're in this together. We're building the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Honor. It literally means to value other people. Do you and I value other people? It means to be generous with our compliments, to let people know. If you see somebody, and I may come across as a little quirky sometimes, if I see somebody who looks sharp, I'll just say, man, that is a sharp looking outfit. Or if I see somebody, a lady who has nice looking hair, maybe we're, we're at Walmart, we're going through the checkout line, and you look at that person, you can just tell they're kind of on their last breath of trying to get through the day. Hey, I appreciate you helping us today. I wouldn't have found this otherwise without you. Oh, by the way, your hair looks nice. I, I just think about, be generous with your compliments. When those, as I already said, are serving you at wherever you like to eat, be generous with your compliments and be generous with your tip. Honor them, value them. Serve others. Listen to what other people have to say. Sometimes what they have to say. Sometimes our kids just need your time. Remember years ago, my wife was working in the kitchen. One of our kids was talking and she was working around and they stopped and said, Mom, you're not listening to me with your face. Listen to people with your face. Put down the device. Understand that your next appointment is not important. That moment is important. Kids spell love, T-I-M-E. Teenagers spell love, T-I-M-E. Adults and senior adults spell love, T-I-M-E. Take that moment to honor that person, to listen to that person. I was at the nursing home earlier this morning visiting my neighbor from down the road. He told me some great stories. We cried some tears. I reminded him how much I love him. We prayed together. We laughed together. That's honoring each other. This Saturday at our church, we're going to honor kids and parents and grandparents who come as we have a big back to school, one day VBS beginning at 10 a.m. I invite you to come. We're honoring all those people that come, shoes and socks and backpacks and school supplies. We're honoring them. Not because we expect them to give us money. All we want to do is pour into their lives and just say, we are grateful you are part of our community. We've had people say, well, if I, if I had to go to another school, can I still come? Absolutely. 10 a.m. this Saturday at Harris Chapel. We've already got like 200 kids registered. It's going to be exciting. And the next Tuesday, we're going to load up the church van and take food to our teachers and workers in the Liberty Perry School District just to honor them as they begin to start a new school year. No strings attached, just to let them know we love them and we're praying for them as they launch into 2024-25. Wow, that's hard to think about how quickly time flies. <laughs> Some people have come to me over the years and said, Jim, why don't you do that at this school or this school? This school. I say, hey, if God lays it on your heart, you come to me and say, you're going to lead it. I'll be right there to put some charcoal lighter on and we'll burn that fire. We're going to have a great time. We just want to honor our teachers and staff in our local school. What are you doing today? What is being laid on your heart so that you can help honor people around you? A lot of chaos out there. A lot of backbiting out there. A lot of finger pointing out there. A lot of blame out there. A lot of fear going around. What's the future look like? This could be the last election we ever have. Democracy down the drain. The republic out the window. Don't elect that person. Don't elect that person. It could be worse than ever. You know what? I'm choosing to honor others. I invite you to join me. Thanks for listening, guys. Would you pray with me? And then we'll go.
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Everything you need to know is wrapped up in that prayer from Matthew chapter 6, beginning at about verse 9, down through verse 13. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. And I hope this has been something to help honor you. Make it a great day.